널 기다렸어. We're back here at Spo TV. Tasteless in Valdez. We've had some kick-ass games today, dude. Yeah, uh, that last one was a bit of a shocker. Maru taking a loss to Super, his first of Pro League 2016. And that ties everything up. And as you were saying, that actually gives the Afrika Freaks a chance. Yeah, I mean, no matter what we go to game four, and actually I think, although Patience versus SOS was super exciting, when you go past that game, I think Symbol and Rogue is the next most interesting because that's a real toss up. Rogue has been in a bit of a slump so far. Yeah, we'll see if he can, uh, you know, continue with. He seems to do okay in pro league, just yeah. not so good in individual league. So let's see if he can continue with that. If he's got a cool build for ZVZ. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll have to see. Um, this could definitely go to the East match, buddy. That was one loss back there that the Junior Green Wings were not supposed to have. Morrow was yeah. not supposed to lose that game. And SOS winning his one was uh, an interesting one, too. Well, let's take a look at the predictions. 7-0 here for Cure. Now, I, I love Billowy. I think he's a great player, but Cure is just very scary nowadays. He's he's back in form, man. He's doing better and better. He made the round of four once again over at GSL. That's right. I feel like he's still underrated. Yeah, that makes for sense. sure. For sure. I, even for me, and I cast him all the time, it's not the guy I immediately think of when I think of Terran, but he's damn good. Billowy. He's been a cheeky guy too, though. Let's see what he's got in store in this game. All right, in the upper left, in the purple from the Afrika Freaks, it's Billowy. And in the bottom right, in the green, Cure. Cure's got the uh, Harry Potter glasses on. He's had the, those for a while. You're a wizard, Harry. He says that Kanata is really handsome. He's not wrong about that. Yeah. We've got a very stellar looking lineup of casters down here, oh, if I may yeah. say so. That's why we're on stage, Tasteless. That's right. They wanted to get our pretty faces up here. Well, you're basically the brains and I'm the looks here. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just this caster piece of arm candy for mm. Valdez. Yeah, you don't say much, but it's okay. But you just no, you I, just show your face. Yeah, I know. I just I give one wink in, in to the camera and all of the stream <laughs> chat gets pregnant. <laughs> so, guys, we are now going into this match. We already had some crazy upsets. Don't count this game as one where that couldn't happen as well. Um, Cure, though, a teammate of Maru. Uh, a play style that's uh, similar enough to Maru. You know what I'm saying? Just overall good yeah. fundamentals. Um, let's see how this game goes. We're on our classic King Sejong Station map here. And I wonder if we're going to see some more aggression that Adept Stalker all in with the double upgrades was quite nice. It's been pretty popular lately. Uh, Adept Stalker is just it's popping. Yeah, it's 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 just a good strat. It's a good style of play. Let's actually talk about why it's good too. So when you look at um, what what the Adept Stalker combo, or we've seen it with Phoenixes as well. Uh, the Adepts because they can shade in. You get to pick exactly where you want to fight. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, it's not just about who has a bigger army, it's about who has a better angle, a la concave, convex, yada, 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 yada. yada. Um, but with the Adepts, you can actually come in, like, behind them, for instance. And, of course, you shade pretty fast, so there's actually not as much Terran can do about it. And then the Stalkers can come in and would blink as well. Yeah. And then you just, like, have better surface area. It's super mobile. You get to pick it. Terran does not. Yeah. You can't get kited, especially there, because there's nowhere to go. You got your third base there. Uh, you got your ramp. You're not going to, you know, funnel your, yourself, excuse me, up the ramp, you know, because right. you're just going to, you're going to get killed if you're doing that, so. And it uh, usually happens at the Terran's third base. Yeah. These, these fights where it's like Terran might have a good position. Terran's always had to rely to some degree on turtling and hiding and defending. And I think with the adepts, uh, cowards indeed. <laughs> That's why I'm a Protoss player. I'm a yeah. manly man guy. 
Oh, we like, just all kick in, kick in the door. Stuff. Take no prisoners. Um, but uh, when you look at it in all seriousness, I mean, it is something where like Protoss players have pretty effectively exploited this this feature in the game, and it's something that Terran players are having to adapt and recover from. And I think some of the ways that they've done that is is to kind of not play with this sparse defense that if you know you just got the right angles here, you're going to be fine. Do see that uh, that SCB over there in the top right, tucked away. Probably just going to go for a scout a little bit later on, probably yeah. towards the third base. Wants to see the timing. Um, could also get a good read on what kind of strategy is coming across because who knows? I mean, Billy's on the same team as Super. Maybe he makes a third base in five gates and just goes across and tries to kill. Yeah, Gear dude, <laughs> that's actually a good point. Um, you know, Mara was playing very well, but I do think the direction he took that build order was a bit problematic. Mm. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you there. I mean, Kira's getting a very fast third uh, CC here. You see his tech is delayed because of it. His factory is coming out here. Uh, what time is it? It's actually four, four minutes, minutes into here. the game. So, going to be in a bit of a better spot, I'd say. And here's that scout. Not I seeing see, much. <laughs> yeah, it's just not getting that much information there. Uh, I do like that pylon, though, put out there to spot. That's actually pretty smart. Okay, so Billowy's gonna take uh, a quick third, and you know, we saw Mario try to push out and deny that third, and this is like just a third base, it's kind of hard to, to, to stop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's you, like you, actually pretty far away. You basically don't. Uh, this is why this map creates these long, really fun macro games, because right. third base is pretty easy to defend, especially for Protoss, uh, especially back in the day with all the sentry play that we used to see. Uh, you got like a nice little choke over there. And some, you know, rocks in the way. And uh, it looks like Billowy's actually going to go for, you know, just a solid late game. He's actually getting double forges. He is going for DTs, which is kind of interesting. Huh. Uh, as well as a war prism. So I assume he's just going to try to do some DT harass. I mean, you could pretty much get away with it, right? So no no harm, no foul um, in, in the direction that Protoss wants to go late game. If he just incorporate a couple DTs. To keep Terran a little bit busy, maybe make Terran spend a few scans, maybe make Terran make a few extra turrets that they didn't necessarily want to get. Yeah, and you can see that blink here finishing up the research pretty much just for defense in case Kier was going to do a more aggressive style like what Maru wanted to do in that last game. But the drop's only coming out now, two medevacs to complete. Uh, we have a scan here to confirm what Kier probably already suspected was that the third should be up and running over there. So the War Prism is probably going to warp in some DTs um, outside the main. He's going to pick that up and just probably start flying around, doing a little bit of harass. We see that the Glaives upgrade is being uh, acquired here by Billowy as well. Uh, now Cure is taking his third base, albeit a little bit later. Uh, it's a safer third base to take at this point in time in the game. But of course, taking that third base now may uh, spread Cure a little bit thin here. He may have uh, defense and resources put to try to hold that third base, and then, you know, the DTs come into the main and do a lot of damage. Yeah, definitely going for the main here. Uh, generally a good spot to drop. And a couple of turrets were made. Looks like actually two turrets here. So he's very well protected, even a small amount of units grouped up. Uh, to deal with anything like this. Yeah, it looks like uh, Billowy might try to go into the, uh, into, excuse me, <clears throat> sorry, into the area uh, where there is no uh, turrets, but I think there's enough units there that's that's a little bit risky. Um, but yeah, so far, Kier not really touched. I mean, this is a game where both these guys showing a lot of respect for each other and really playing a very careful game. This is really going to pick up in the next few minutes here uh, as we kind of now fully enter into mid game. Once again, a focus on double upgrades for Billowy. Um, we saw that of Super 2 with the build that he did. Uh, here comes the DT drop. There are, well, there's even a scan, so forced to just pick up right away. And yeah, and get Li out of there. Liberator's out here now, and so he's going to have to go ahead and get out of here. Uh, he's actually dropping out the DTs. Uh, and I think this angle might be bad enough that there's no way that he can actually um, get out there safely. And I think here, Terran should probably start pushing. I mean, look at these supplies, Valdez. 117 to 147. Terran's huh. just been macroing really just quite well. Um, he hasn't put on much pressure. You know, he's beginning to make liberators. And it looks like he wants to possibly go to that third base. This is a decently well, early time fourth, fourth base, base, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Now we saw someone kill that little bear there last time. Don't do it again. Leave him please. alone. Those things are endangered. Uh oh. He's right in the middle of the fray. <laughs> okay. Simi coming two forward. Sides. If he oversteps any further, then he's going to trigger those widow mines. He's got to be careful about that. Uh, Terran could basically occupy this area and stop probes from mining over there. And here comes the Liberator Harass. This is going to be pretty tricky right now for Billowy. He's about to be hit from many different corners. Does have a pylon over there. The Widow Mines do go off, one of them at least. But he pushes this back. But at the same time, he's pulling the whole army out of position on the right side of the map. He's starting to push through here with these rocks. He's got some Liberation Zones set up. Protoss is going to have to be prepared. Meanwhile, the army for Cure is on the run, headed southbound. 2-2 two, two about to finish up here for Billowy. He can yeah. definitely take a very strong fight. Uh, got a lot of gateways, too. Looking to uh -oh. come from two oh! sides. Oh! No Mothership Core there. That means no pylon cannons. This is actually a really tough angle. Uh, and I think the rest of this army, he might be able to sandwich this. Looks like that's what he wants to do. He's going to blink underneath the Liberators and focus him down. And he should be able to clean up the rest of this army as well. But I think there's more uh, here for Cure coming from the bottom. Am I incorrect about this? Oh, yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. We're actually missing at the DT, doing a bit of damage. But here's the rest of Cure's army. Yeah, he's coming up now, continuing to push forward with these mines. Cure with just more supply overall. Another scan comes down here to see what's on the high ground. Can he get up there and start getting that immortal? Looks like he should be able to. He's got to focus it down here, a scan to make sure the path is clear. And he's got to force his way through now, going to burrow those widow mines too. Oh, this is actually pretty scary. I think Cure might just break Billowy. He might oh, yeah. just barely have the muscle. We saw Billowy scratching his head for a second there. And I think that actually is game. The force that is Cure has done it, GG! There you have it, Cure just making more stuff, it looks like, right? Maybe getting a bit greedy with the fourth base timing and all the upgrades and the tech there for the Protoss. Yeah. Here just making more stuff and killing him. He outmaneuvered him a little bit with the attack towards the fourth base and then going to attack the rocks. I think there was a lot that Kier did that, that's hard for, you know, the common gamer to see. I mean, he just had perfect macro. If you look at that, the supply difference was one where it's like, Clearly, Kier has way more, despite expanding later than the Protoss. And, I mean, sometimes that's how games won. A lot of times it's tactics, it's strategy. In this case, it's just the sheer mechanical will of Cure making way too much for his opponent to handle. Yeah, that's why Cure is a fantastic Terran, and he finds so much success. He has some of the best macro out of all the Terrans we do have out here. And you can see Billy is a, a bit miffed. A little bit unhappy with that loss. Well, I mean, that was pretty brutal. That's not normally like a, what a pro league game looks like, you know? That almost likes it, uh, looks like it was two different players. Whoops. All right. I think I could join into this game now. We're having some bug in yeah. Battle.net. Okay, we're here. We're in the game now. Um, But, yeah, that looked like it was two players from two different divisions. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. kind of. I mean, pure, bigger, faster, stronger right yeah. there. It's kind of like High Masters versus Grandmasters. It's like or heavyweight something. versus featherweight there. <laughs> I mean, they're just. <laughs> that's, it was, yeah, that's. It's yeah. like, this is why we have divisions, okay? So, some guy who's like 220 pounds isn't just nailing a guy who's 135 oh or something. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, <laughs> Cure just had more stuff. That's Horses essentially. Land. That was like the story of that game, you know? Yeah. Normally. He, he defended all the <laughs> drops, he took yeah. no damage, basically. Uh, Billowy let him. You know, he was trying to do some drops, but they didn't really work out. Right. Um, and he pulled him out of position. He got his army totally out of position. And then he started attacking the back rocks, and that's when stuff started falling apart. That's about it. I mean, we're going to have to go to this next match. Uh, it's going to be a ZVZ here. Now, Rogue has been having a hard time. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. In, in individual leagues, for sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, if if Rogue can pull this out, I mean, that's going to be the end for the Afrika Freaks, unfortunately. No, I would expect him to. I, I think he feels a little bit more comfortable in this pro sure. format, the best of ones. He's good at preparing builds for players, and you saw Symbol. He doesn't even have a picture, so he's not, he even, was a he's like not even a player yeah, right now. That's so. right. He was actually in that shade form right now. Yeah. Like right when so. we had to, he had to go into the booth, he would, <laughs> and we saw his ghost form just yeah. move over to the booth, then whoosh, Even though he's right a Zerg player, it's like one of your yeah. dreams.
That's right. Yeah, it's like one of my weird casting dreams. <laughs> like where I'm like, I thought I was playing sense. Zerg. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we should be jumping into that game in just a little bit here. We do not have our Jenner Green Wings player uh, in the lobby yet. I'm not sure what the deal is with that, but hopefully we'll start this soon. <laughs> 